there is a world of difference between playing Open Cup from your bedroom and doing it on that stage right over there with a live crowd of people watching you, studio lights beating down on you. It's not an experience that Fire would have had too much of. He's played in Insomnias before, but primarily, you know, the, the open form Insomnias before we converted to the True Silver format. So this is probably his first big experience with like high pressure major LAN Hearthstone. Yeah, and on top of that as well, you know, you've got all those factors and then Chucky sat on the other side sure. of the stage like, yeah, he's Chaki. You know, yeah. he has some very strong performance recently, joined Luminosity, so that team's actually looking pretty impressive already. You know, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, like American teams, you could say, to mm -hmm. a certain extent. So, you know, I imagine Chaki's really on form at the moment and pretty hungry for this, like, another major win for him. Yep, and as you see the classes uh, on the screen right now, you're seeing a Warrior go down for Fire and Shaman going down for Chaki. So, Fire has chosen to ban the Shaman, Chucky chosen to ban the Warrior. How do you think that matches up with what the rest of the lineups are? Well, I'd imagine that Mage isn't Freeze Mage. If, uh, if Fire's not banning out the Warriors, that would feel pretty grim. Right. I think overall, though, it's going to really depend on what the decks like Fire are playing, because you can see like Paladin, there's Murloc Paladin, could be Nazoth at heavy control. Yep. But then there's lists like Jambray's lists that are more mid-range to aggressive. So, you know, really confused. All I do know is I'm pretty sure the Druid is Yogg. Yeah, I mean, we more or less know that. We don't know what he resubmitted for top 16, but we know that he went through the uh, Swiss portion with a lot of very quick Druid games. It looks like that is going to be the same plan for Fire here, going straight in with a Druid. So I will leave this game in the capable hands of Lorinda and Raven. Enjoy, guys. Right, cheers, Soto. And as we see Fire drawing no ramp, and that is something that he'll be very disappointed about. He'll be throwing this lot away, desperately hunting for that in this matchup. Yeah, you really want to ram. I, there's like two ways you really want to go versus Rogue. You either, you know, obviously want to ramp because you're playing that Druid yeah. class we've heard about that likes those cards, but also even putting on like early pressure versus Rogue is pretty good. Get them to use some of their removal um, early on and just keep them on the back foot instead of giving them the easy game of, you know, taking their time and just like drawing whatever. So this is looking pretty horrible for Fire at the moment. In, in terms of Chucky's hand, though, it's it's okay. Like the sap, you can't really do the thing you used to do because the mulligan thing mm -hmm. has changed. Where like you used to be able to see what your opponent's mulligan first, and then you can make the choices. Right. And Druids was one of the class that was actually the most important because if they keep three cards and they're both innovate, innovate, huge minion, you need an answer. Yeah, so sap could have been a consideration for a keep there, but that isn't really possible anymore. So Chucky's is just going to mulligan everything but the prep away. So it'll be interesting to see what Fire does here. He was taking a little bit of advice on board from um, Terence, I believe, as he was previously on a team with him some time ago. And the advice was spend 20 seconds every turn just to, you know, you've not been on this stage before. Like Sottle pointed out, they're on a stage, the people watching are 50 feet away from them. You, you can see them. Um, just take your 20 seconds and see, but he's he's passed that back pretty quickly there. Yeah, and I think like fr from history, like Fire is a bit of a one of those players that when things start going wrong, he gets very upset about about life in general. Yeah, it's been so uh, as long as he can, you know, just just keep sort of chill about it and just trying to take it in stride, he should be okay. There's nothing too crazy going on in his hands so far. But, you know, he is working towards the Violet Teacher into having double Wrath for Cycle or even just hard removal again. Yeah, he's got plenty of removal, like you say, nothing going on. But if Druid has nothing going on, it tends to not be too bad because it's going to draw stuff sooner rather than later. Yeah. And as Sotl said, like, Fire's a very talented player and sometimes these talented players play a bit too fast. Going back to this thing, and I just hope he doesn't fall into this routine of playing quickly. Just, just take his advice on board and play slow. I think he'll be doing well here. Um, but this hand is going to need a lot of thought as how to develop. Yeah, and just a uh, you know, men quick mention on Chucky's deck. Uh, we don't know the deck, of course. Right. You know, we don't have deck lists that are accessible to us. Uh, the players don't know the decks, but I believe this rogue is the question event for a rogue that Chucky's been running. As I think he tweeted a screenshot of his like, you know, of like a match right. earlier on. And like quest adventure rogue, I don't know about you, Laurie. I've not played too much of it, but I kind of love it. I'm not a huge rogue guy, but I love quest adventure because so. <laughs> all the times I've seen it playing in tournaments and playing well, you just play quest adventure and like conceal it. And then your yeah. opponent dies next turn. It's like it's so it's so crazy. And when you play against that deck, it feels so helpless. Like they play this questing adventure, this this two two thing that you know, every arena player has seen that card played a million times. It's like it's not very good, you laugh at it. Then it gets concealed and becomes a three three. 
And they do something else, it's a 4 4. You're like, okay, I can deal with it. And then next turn, hang on, I can't deal with it now. It's a 12 12. And, and now they're just going to make it huge and hit me with, yeah, with a 12 9 or something. It's like, I'm not happy anymore. I'm not having fun. Yeah, it's um, definitely a deck I want to try out more. But Chucky has the option now of actually just dropping an SI7 agent and just saying, I'll just put a 3 3 on the board. And he's going to go for it. I like it. Because instead, yeah. now, on turn 3, it's kind of a weird turn for Druid to, like, if he rats it, you're like, okay, he's just got a random one mana, unless there's a Raven Idol to fill the curve out. You're probably feeling okay about a turn two Wrath as a response. Is You know, you don't have a particular four play from uh, Chaki, but he could still just sound us into hero power. So, you know, he does have options, but this now he's forcing Fire to have either an answer or just leave the 3-3 three, three on the board and start pushing damage. Yeah, he's drawn a decent card for this spot as well. This, this Maya Keeper is actually handy if he wants to just ramp up now. Uh, he's just going to choose to to trade with the Web Wrath. That's fine as well. Uh, I was just thinking he might start to get the ramp going, but he wants to keep that coin, um, which is greedy, but probably... You know, sometimes it's okay to be greedy. Greedy gets a negative word, but it's not always wrong to be greedy. Sometimes you Yeah, I mean, it, if you play a greedy deck in, a, let's say, a control mirror, or you can get make the greedy plays and not die, then you normally exactly. win. That's like, you have you have to take chances now and then. But what I do think as well is, if you let Rogue start to just do, like, chip damage to you, and you just, like, yeah. you just leave a 3-3 three, three on the board hitting you, then suddenly... You know, one even just concealed gadget Zan, and then there's Cold Blood, Cold Blood, Leroy, and you're just dead. So I really like just guarding off as much damage as possible early on, especially when it's as simple as just a rat. You know, it wasn't overly complicated to deal with, didn't take up too many resources. Right, and now he is going to have to make a, a decision. He can do a pretty good looking Violet teacher here. Uh, if he wants to just clear things up with the Living Roots, or again, he can just go for the ramp. And it's a constant line the Druid treads. It depends how you see. It's the class, I think, that plays the most into its future. Yeah. You don't just look at the hand with any deck, what you've got now, but with Druid, you sort of, you have to visualize what you're likely to draw, give or take in the next few turns. And that, that will decide whether he goes for the immediate board or whether he just ramps up. And I, yeah. I kind of like the immediate board here with Chucky only having five cards in hand. Yeah, I think it's very true as well, because like Druid can pretty much travel through time anyway with Innovate. So, you know, planning out what you're going to do in the next few turns really is quite important. And it looks like he's favoring the Maya Keeper. And is he going to go for the gonna go for the ramp? He does. Yeah, it goes up to five. And six is a pretty good turn for Druid. Um, again, don't know the list, but there's potential of, like, Sylvanas in the deck as well. Like, another sort of greedy option. Yeah, we can see the problem. Arcane Giant. Obviously, that's yeah. um, something that he'll be looking to get that down to. Probably try and cast on turn eight alongside, you know, the coins of spell, uh, spell, the living roots of spell, he'll get the violet teacher down to get the one ones. All the time that arcane giant will be coming down and the thing with arcane giant, if it gets sapped, it doesn't care much. Yeah, because this the uh, the mana reduction sticks because you have played the spells that game. I always like my arcane giants two of in hand, zero mana. So I like, I like to play on the board, personally. Yeah, oh, no, no, you want the moment that you <laughs> play the giants and then you just imagine your opponent's face when you go, yeah, oh, zero mana, eight, eight. But it's actually oh, another really good zero card in this matchup for that reason. It's yeah. one of the cards that, one of the things that Druid does struggle with sometimes against Rogue is, oh, just sap your Ancient Wall. I've got five mana left over. What are you going to do? But the Arcane Giant gets around that problem. Although this is looking to be a bit of a problem, I think, for Fire, that there's no defensive uh, minions in hand, so there's no Ancient of War, there's no Druid of the Claw, for example, to put up speed bumps. But if you look at Chaki next turn, he can just quite easily gadgets and prep conceal. Yeah, so what, what Fire should be considering here is that he has all these cards in hand and Chucky only has five. Fire's still plenty to deal with, it's not like it's a problem. But if Fire can cast all these and get them done before Chucky can use all his, Fire will probably win. He just has more stuff. Yeah. It's all good cards doing things. So he's got to try and make sure that he maybe give up a little bit of value somewhere along the line to make sure you keep using these cards. Otherwise you're going to die with three or four cards unused. Yeah, choosing to hero power there, gain the armor, and also save the living roots. Because there's a thought where you're like, well, maybe I'll just play the living roots, put some tokens. I make the problem so far is that Chaki's not been having to respond to fire. Fire's been having to respond to Chaki. Right. And that when Rogue is in the driver's seat, you need to be afraid, especially when we and lead to this potential that turn. That card situation will change really quickly if Chaki wants it to, because Gadgets are into preparation to conceal. If he wants to go that route, um, they always the want to go to the gadgets and right. Well, just because you've got the conceal into the questing, it may be a card that you would consider. Yeah, you play two conceals. But we'll just draw that later. Right? We're going to go through our deck now. Yeah, you just save the second conceal for, for questing if he plays it. It's and fine. draw the other preparation ready and stuff as well. You know, And then... 
That's oh. one way to deal with a board in a hurry. Yeah, there is a you know the, probably the the most disgust card in Hearthstone, I think. You got as far as disgust, you missed the ing off the end. Uh, you know, <laughs> take that one out you want it, Lorena. <laughs> well, I, it, that is definitely something that could just propel you back into the game, because I think even now, Fire is looking a little bit rough. Well, very rough. The, the gadget sand can't really be interacted with this turn. And then Chaki will just draw his deck, and then there's nothing Fire can do. He still doesn't yeah, play Taunt. I don't know if he panic. plays two inch of wars, one inch of war. The list at the moment, Especially with the introduction of Arcane Giants, it's very fluid, I feel. No one's really decided yeah. what the, this list should look like now. Yeah, I think he needs to panic right now and reduce that. <laughs> is, uh, that is that the play he's going to make, Lorinda? Just panic. So I've got these. I could Violet Teeth ah. for what, you know, the Living Roots, or I could just panic. <laughs> so yeah, I think he's got to panic. I think he's got to Violet Teacher, get as many spells cast as possible into next turn, probably just clear up what his, you know, if he's still alive, which he should be on this high life total. Um, just get all the value out of his cards right now and then set up the turn 10 Yog. Um, he's clinging onto this coin. I feel that, you know, just, just get it just get it played. Get that Arcane Giant cheaper. Yeah, well, it's either that or he's going to coin into Yog. Like, that could be the plan. Just last for another turn. He's only played four or five spells, though, I feel. Maybe I missed a couple. But yeah, but he might just need In fact, to. we can see he's only played two because the Arcane yeah, Giant costs he, he has next turn, though, right? Sure. So next turn, he can't play Yog unless he draws Innovate anyway. So next turn, he could go into, you know, Fel, you just spam everything, coin, uh, not coin, Fell Rage, Living Roots, Wrath, just do everything, and then say, coin Yogg, win me the game, please. Yeah, and he's going to need it to, because oh now God. we've got Edwin for a gigantic amount coming up here as well. Uh, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a big Edwin. Yeah, and there's no, term. there's no mulch in, in Fire's hand, there's no nothing really, like, what's he going to do? He can deal with this gadget zone to a certain extent, but even that requires the Wrath and the Living Roots to not take damage. Yeah. Look, suddenly, you know, in one turn of card draw, there you go, down to 17, a 10 10, an 8 4 on the board, and the dagger, and still plenty of resources in Chucky's hand. This is looking pretty horrible for Fire. Yeah, I don't think there's much that he can do. There's things that he can do from his side if your opponent hasn't got the Leroy. Um, you've got to play as if obviously that's the case. He doesn't know that, but it's looking really bleak here. 10 10 Edwin is just horrible. And there's yeah. still just all his backup in hand. So I was going to say then, it looked like Fire was edging towards Fandral into Feral Rage, but that's not enough. You gain eight, but you're taking 18 or 19 with the weapon this turn. So I actually think you just have to just Wrath and, and just do what you can this one turn and then coin into Yog and go all in. So he is managing to get off as many spells as possible. He's just going to play it all, gain some armor, and then say, next turn, Yog's going to win me this game. Yeah, and that was decent. He managed to, that was a trap. The Fandral was like, hey, I can get loads of value. Yeah. Well, we said earlier, value is nothing. And just look at these hand sizes, how they've swapped around because of you know, how well synergized this rogue deck is. And also, again, Fire did play his hand kind of slowly, but it's going to work out for him. Keeping this coin is going to give him a way back in. So. Yeah, it, may, it may be that that was the correct call after all. Yeah, it's pretty much his only way. You know, another card I really like is this Dark Iron Skulker we've seen slip into some rogue decks. It's, you know, this is like an, another nice scenario, but I think you'll find with even just playing one, you'll, you'll find a use for Dark Iron Skulker in almost, you know, most games. Right, and so it's going to be that moment we all look forward to. It's going to be Yogg Saron. Here we go. It's got to be done. There's He's no been other option. praising his Yogg enough recently. He needs to be praising it quite a lot. That's it. Quite a lot of it that, they looked like there was a slight shrug from Chaki as he saw a coin into Yogg, and he's like, okay, come on, let's see what happens. So this is a good start. If he actually kills the things on the other side of the board, then he will have... Have a oh. chance. Mirror Image is going to help soak up... Well, there is attack. double sap in hand still. That's true. Oh, there we go. That was it. It was only a short one, as you said. Not many spells played overall the whole game. Quick concede from fire. And Chaki goes 1-0 up in a pretty straightforward game, to be honest. You know, yeah, Chaki really just played his cards and fire, I feel, maybe didn't do enough early to make Chaki respond. It feel like that once I need to panic, maybe think if you should have even panicked before that. And yeah. Just hit the panic button, stuff stuff on the table. If your opponent clears it with a fan or something, unlucky, but... Yeah, because I think, like, it was... I, I agree, I think, like, the living roots, there was multiple turns to keep it, and I feel whenever you hold on to a lot of combo cards in this yeah. druid list, you just wait too long and then you're in, you're in trouble. You need to force the rogue to react to you so they can't just set up ridiculous Especially when the like rogue that. is Chucky. He's not yeah. going to not kill you in eight or nine turns. He's going... If, if a guy who actively promotes the rogue sucks thing yeah, yeah. brings rogue to a tournament... Yeah, you know. Yeah, you need to just be a little bit serious for a minute. 
But um, but yeah, I feel like there could have been a little pressure with Living Roots. Even if it just forced like dagger up trade, dagger, you know, like that's just mana out of the rogue's turn, right? So you can't yep. play super optimally. But we are moving on to the next game. Chaki, of course, on the rogue. This is last arrow standing, and fire switching over to the mage. So it is freeze mage, which means that with those bands, he is more comfortable facing the warrior than he is facing the. Oh, there shaman. is no warrior. So we. Oh yeah, there is warrior. warrior. I'm yeah, it is blind. warrior. I'm losing it. No, you're losing it. We're all losing it. We're right all there. losing it. But yeah, so he's more happy facing the warrior than he is facing the shaman, which is understandable where the shaman just... We saw it with the Oskarka game. He had double doomsayer and still couldn't beat the shaman. Yeah. Um, so he's more comfortable. Warrior's not the terrible matchup it was in the in the olden days. And Fire's more comfortable just with his lineup kind of being a little bit weak to shaman and just getting rid of that shaman. Yeah, and I think the idea here as well is um, Freeze Mage, he can use it as a counter pick try and just get a win and then you can kind of say okay in this lineup yes. with warrior shaman freeze mage is probably only going to get one win max i'll take the win you know and then like right. and then your other deck should clear up the warrior which is the uh, probably the overall grand plan and like you player. say that's another difference between last hero standing and and conquest where last hero standing you often build a lineup to win three two yeah you'll see players like Firebat, like Askarka, and you look at their results and be like, oh, he was lucky, he won 3-2 every game. No. That's how it should work. <laughs> game 5 every time was a 70-30 or an 80-20 because the lineups puts them into this great position. And it just looks like it's close on paper, but sometimes those 3-2s aren't close at all. Yeah. It's pretty much just how it's planned out, depending on what the meta's looking like at the moment. But this game is looking pretty slow so far. Nothing too much on Chaki's end. Not that Rogue really normally gets off to an aggressive opening, unless there's a, you know, like coin prep, something stupid, coin, like in, into Van Cleef uh, early on, which is definitely a strategy in this matchup. If you can make a huge right. Van Cleef early against Freeze Mage, you're feeling pretty good. And Fire's got the hand you're looking for. Give or take, you want to get these these cycling cards, these cards that draw you more cards out of the way early. They're in your deck to thin your deck out effectively to draw your combo. You can't play your combo on turn two, so you want to play your draw cards on turn two, which get you That would definitely be nice overpowered if you could play your combo on turn two. That would be really good. That would be a pretty good deck. I think I might even play it. We may become Freeze Mage players. You'd make casting a lot shorter as well. I know, be like, oh, it's turn two, guys, we're done. This is interesting because he is going to spend that three mana on, obviously, um, drawing cards, almost certainly, but does he want to... I think I like the Acolyte. I, I feel like a minion is always better in this scenario because there's only one durability on the rogue weapon, so a Deadly Poison is going to... If a Deadly Poison came out, great, one durability, done. And you still cycle a card. And the other way is like Backstab, SI7, don't deal with it at all. Exactly. You don't want to give it two cards, but also you've got to ping it next turn, so it's going to be two cards. You've got Novice Engineer for your curve. And it's potentially going to hit once, which is damage still. You know, the, the, yes. the chip damage for Freeze Mage is very important. You'll see may, uh, the, like a lot of Freeze Mage players just even favor like pings every turn just to bring them slightly down and then within combo range. Yeah, so. you can't talk about Freeze Mage matches without mentioning laughing, or at least I can't. <laughs> and he was one of the first players to realize, hang on, we don't have to Alex Stras them with a block up and shoot them in the face. We can just shoot them in the face. If we can do seven or nine, get them down to 21, that's like a key number sometimes, get them down to that sort of area. We can just, you know, just launch spells at their face and not worry about Alex Stras. Yeah, and that's the joy of a card that you just hovered over then, the Forgotten Torch, you know, like three damage, uh, you know, from that spell and then locking in effectively a three mana fireball. But fire is going to be able to deal with this Cresting Adventure, pretty straightforward, just using the Frostbolt yeah, thing. He, he did go Frostbolt thing. He could have gone Frostbolt into Doomsayer, maybe? I'm just wondering when you get to play this Doomsayer, is he trying to catch a Gadget Sand with it? Yeah, I think if you're not trying to stop Tomb Pillager, you're trying to stop Gadget Sand, right? Right. They're, they're the only two predictable turns, really. Like, turn four always would be Tomb Pillager if Rogue could pick, and then turn six is always Gadget Sand, or maybe even seven. But I think you'd have to be safe on six with a prep. We saw what happened last time. Sure. I'm fine with it. I just, you know, just it was an option that seemed at least viable there to get yourself some tempo going into turn five. I think the problem with Doomsayer as well is because it was questing, if you get like sap and then a few more cards, yes, like questing is too big to, to kill again. You do have to just kill it while you can. That's a very good point. I was thinking it was an Edwin for some reason. I forget that questing is just. Keeps you growing. Know, three Edwins in your deck. He's and a, two of them get bigger. He, he's still a growing boy. Best wow. He's still going to grow. Just like you, Lorinda. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just growing old, unfortunately, <laughs> right now. <laughs> so, fire again, the eternal question. To draw and take damage, or to just make sure 
I don't die and just draw my cards naturally in. Not taking five seems a really good option. You hate doing this against Rogue, you give them that coin that goes into Gadget Sands or comes out of Gadget Sands, but it's all you can do. Yeah, and I think as well that, you know, he's got plenty of cycle that he can just cycle. There's always, well, I can just cycle next turn. As we said earlier, Fire's not going to just kill Jackie in like, in, it'll turn seven, do you know what I mean? It's not yeah. going to happen. So if you can like make the game last longer and buy X amount of turns, that's how you play Freeze Mage and that's how you win. So I like it, just remove the damage, as you said. Gives him the coin, but he's going to get it at some point. So not too much of a problem, but I feel like Fire's running out of turns. He can choose not to yeah. cycle because his hand is a very he, cycle every He hand. will actually also be thinking that it's worse than it is. Uh, when you sit opposite a rogue, they've always got gadgets in their hand. They've always got like three damage spells plus whatever else they need to conceal. We can see that actually Chucky's hand is is kind of a mishmash, which will suddenly change the second Jack Gadgets and appears. But for now, it's not doing a great deal. And Alex Strahd's off the top. Really good news for Fire. Yeah, Alex Strahd is one of those, again, it's like one of the funnier cards in the deck because even if you get it early, it's actually important because you play as if you have it, right? It changes right. your game yeah. plan. Like you said, it's either chip damage early and then just kill them, or you can focus on things like removal and cycle and know you can Alex Strahd's a nine, kill them 10. Like that's the grand plan, right? And having it in your hand at any point in the game alters your game plan straight away. And this Doomsayer is working out nicely for Fire on the turn that, you know, you were saying he's going for the Auctioneer, because now he can't play the Auctioneer realistically, can Chucky and clear this. I mean, he could, Rogue could do some disgusting Yeah, there would be have to be like double preps, and, sure. like double evasions. But now he's actually just like gone, well, you know, this turn I know you can deal with this, but you can't play your Auctioneer. And that gives me another turn to get into this Flame Strike, which means that you can't defend your Auctioneer, and then I can just start doing my yeah. My freeze mage things at my own leisure. So how much do you like backstab into Fan of Knives trade here? Because it gives you like an actual use of Fan of Knives, which is rare against freeze mage. Kills off the two one ones and helps the trade yeah, with the Doomsayer. Me. And you still cycle, so you still get edging closer towards the egg. And you side. don't want to take that two damage, or well, you won't take two damage, but you don't want to lose that three damage from the board. You've got to kill this. You might yeah, as well exactly. use the fan. You might as well use it. You've got to cycle it like you say. Oh, oh. oh Le Leroy nice. Prep fan. Okay, just going to stack the damage. Chucky going a little bit step further and just saying, okay, well, I'm going to clear the board yeah. and I'm going to hit you in the face for six. Yeah, and this is like, do you have... Oh, he's saving the backstab, right? Okay, that makes more sense. Do you have Blizzard? And the answer is no. And I don't think Fire is going though. to want to use this Flame Strike because the Auctioneer. Yeah, but the, the problem is, what, what if Jackie never, never plays Auctioneer and hits him for nine every turn? Oh, so Fire's got to decide, you know, do I want to... And the Auctioneer, by the way, has appeared. Yep. He has a got wild the best deals anyway. A wild Auctioneer has appeared, wow. Yeah. We'll CPC. see if the coin and backstab into Sap is super effective. Okay, so I don't think he's going to want to Flame Strike. I think, he's, I think he, the way he's played the game is, I'm not letting you have Auctioneer. Okay. The way he kept the Doomsayer earlier. So he's now going to decide if he wants to throw stuff at this Leroy. I mean, if you don't Flame Strike, I guess you Ice Barrier ping Leroy. And then just let the Ice Barrier soak up almost the damage that's on the board. And then ping Leroy again. He may want to Ice Lance as well. He's going to do what you said, an Ice Barrier. This, this makes most sense to me. Um, you're taking very little damage this turn. But he did cycle rather than ping. Yeah, I mean, this is fine, because what he's doing now is just going to Flame Strike next turn. Sure. Like, that's the plan, right? You presume there's going to be more minions, so you hit Flame Strike then. But, but I think Chucky might smell a rat here. Yeah. It did, might not matter now he's got the second auction. It might not matter. He's like, here, I'll Flame Strike me. I'm going to play another one. But Chucky might play a, feel a smell a rat here. There's six, seven cards in... I keep talking about the number of cards in their hand, but whatever. There's six, seven cards in Fire's hand, and he did nothing. Yeah. So, but again, Chucky drawing that second auction here gives him the luxury that he doesn't need to care. Yeah, and um, this, the Cold Blood could be played. I actually wouldn't even mind the backstab on the Auctioneer because you kind of presume it's going to die, right? You have that idea. Or the, maybe even the backstab onto the 3-3 three, three if you want to try and keep your Auctioneer as healthy as possible. But with the second Auctioneer, like, I think it's pretty fine. Yeah, see what he gets from this Auctioneer roll. Uh, something that these players do try and do is play their cards they're going to play fairly quickly so they've got more time to decide what to do with the things they draw. Otherwise, if you take too long, you suddenly don't know what you're doing with the, the card that changes the game. And I assume he will go for the conceal and make Fire have this, yeah. Yeah, I, so, you know, we were saying, oh, you know, Chucky might have a read that there's AoE, and Fire decided to just hold out the damage, but also, 
you just cash in on the opportunities you sure. get, right? If, if yeah, he actually yeah. just doesn't have the AOE, and then you just can, uh, you actually can just conceal the board, and there's no answer, you just win next. Right. Turn. So the art of being a pro player, first of all, is to make the great reads, and secondly, is to never, unless you're, there's some crazy obvious read, um, never ever a 100% say, well, I've got the read, but I can still be wrong. You've got to, you've got to factor that you can still be wrong, and just go. If you don't have flame strike, and I'm wrong, I've just won. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You just take the chances, right? So there is a second auctioneer, as we said, that was in the hand earlier, and the Tomb Pillager as well. So definitely a few options here to put some power onto the board for Chaki. The only problem with the auctioneer this turn is he would pretty much just have to prep and then hope some of it was drawn because you don't really want to just generally this face. And obviously, if you backstab your own auctioneer, then it's going to start getting a bit uncomfortable and easier to deal with for the mage. So Fire's getting reasonably close to an inevitable win. He's, he's, a, he's a few cards away yet, it's not there yet, but now he's going to start being able to set up the block which allows the two-turn combo. You Alex stars your opponent down to 15, you get the fireballs, you, you smash them in the face for 15, end of game. He's not quite there yet, so he is saving that ice block one more turn. Um, using that barrier, whilst the damage is small coming in, because it effectively buys you one more turn. There's no point putting a barrier down to stop 27 power coming through. It's like, yeah. it doesn't help. It helps by eight, also. You, you just die. But I know what you mean. Color. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But yeah, and the, the ice block as well, you, you know, as you said, you get the value from the barrier because it means that you're on a higher health. So it's not as yeah, easy you, to you proc ice block, over right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Chucky going to tidy up, draw more cards, get rid of the Emperor, which you have to do against Freeze Mage. I mean, you have to do against anything that plays it, but against Freeze Mage, you can just lose the oh, game the okay. next turn if you don't. We're going to go for a, We're going to go on a quest, Lorinda. Going on a it's quest. Be prep into... Is it a concealed quest, though? That's the question. Well, we might find out. Probably not, as I believe there's... That's, is that two conceals this game or one? It's only one, right? It's only one, yeah. Oh, so he could get one. the conceal. He's going to sap the Emperor away. At this point, he doesn't really care if Emperor's replayed, because that's six mana. And then Chaki just procs the block, yeah. so he won't care. Um, but yeah, he's going to tap the Emperor away, prop that barrier, and those both barriers are gone now, so there's only ice blocks that can stop Chaki ending this game quickly. And this board is actually pretty difficult for Fire to deal with. Oh, unless, unless he the Frost Nova from the top, and now he can Emperor again. Now he can just do what he wants. This is actually crazy. A one that could be a one mana Roaring Torch, a minus one mana Ice Lance, if that. A minus fancy. one mana ice. Yeah, that's how it works. Ah, uh, huh? Yeah. Kind of. Of course it does. It actually works like that. Because if, if Lothab if was still a card... If back to zero, sure. Or four with Lothab, yeah. Yeah, that, exactly. That's but you don't gain a mana for casting it. No, you don't gain a mana. Because that would be really good. Cause that would be too good. don't need any extra help <laughs> yeah. as Freeze Mage anyway. Buff straight up. Okay, so he's going to draw at least two more cards now. Like one of the things with Thor saying, um, sorry, with Blood Mage Thalnos costing zero, is you can just play it and ping it like it's casting us and draw the card if you need. Um, he can also just have it in range for for kill, and he's going to be really close if he can draw a Frostbolt. Yeah, this is actually pretty crazy. And also just having, like, being able to Alex Straza and Ice Block in the same turn is kind of huge. Like, normally you cannot do this, um, but yeah, getting a Chucky really good Chucky knows, he has to there. kill this because one of the numbers you do damage is 13 a lot. If that hit face, that would have been an extra two damage, which would have been the 15 needed. He had to do that um, Skulker there. Yeah, really good play. And, and again, you have very limited options to pull off good oh, AoE versus Freeze Mage. Oh, Blizzard to just buy himself even more time. So he can play the Blood Mage if he wants. And he's getting really close to lethal here as well. Yeah, Blizzard going to buy him some time, definitely. And uh, every single turn that ticks on now, Fire's just about pulling the answer he needs to delay the game. The more he delays the game, the more he's going to start drawing into the direct burn to finish it even quicker. So. He's one off lethal right, right now. Is that right? Uh, oh, double Ice Lance with spell power. But no Frost Bolt. That's so. five. Plus seven is 12. No, he's two off lethal, which yeah. is a massive difference. Okay. Hmm, it's ping to the face is an interesting one. It's just... The ping goes face, but you imagine it's just going to be Alex Strazer. Like, almost yeah. all the time. The ice block's up. You're still on 20 uh, in terms of health. So fire there, I guess, just not valuing a ping on any of the other minions. Right, and he doesn't, he doesn't have, have a way to deal with it. The there's no Leroy coming. He's either going to die to the minions he can see, or or he's going to resist them. Um, so he doesn't need to do anything other than deal with what he can see. He knows that if this this board attacks, then the block is dead. So you can just play it around carefully. Yeah, not too many surprises here from Chucky. 
I mean, yeah, at this point, I guess he just may as well conceal. It draws him a card. Why sure. not? Um, it, like, if, like, as you said, if Fire's going to deal with this board, it's going to be like an AoE, right? Or a Frostnova Doomsayer or something. <laughs> so the conceal kind of helps. Did he use a Frostbolt at the start? Or did he not use one at all? Because he needs Frostbolt to win the game. No, right? he used Frostbolt early on. So he has one yeah, yeah. left. Out of about 12 cards, you will tell me. But wouldn't just, like, a Fireball do it as well? Because he doesn't have to OTK him. He has Ice Block, right? So if you just you can just Alex Straza and then do everything mm -hmm. next to sure. him with the burn. So yeah, he has multiple burn, here. yeah, multiple burn spells he can draw. It doesn't matter. Yeah, getting that Thanos down to give you just ping him to death. Chance of doing it. Yes, yeah, so he pings this turn, right? There we go. Still doesn't quite get there, but doing this means the Thanos cycles him an additional card. And that's what I was saying and a couple of turns. Yeah, the difference exactly. Between being on two and the difference between being on one means he couldn't go for it and put the block up and leave your opponent on one. Knowing that this deck is jammed full of like things like Skulkers and probably got no healing. And now I believe there's two fireballs. Oh, look at the he, staff. I actually like scary. that. That's actually awesome. Yeah. Like just completely denying the card draw as much as but possible. But it's not going to matter because Fire's got um, five, uh, four damage in one card, but one mana on the left. So he'll be able to afford to ping this yeah. to fish for, like you say, the two fireballs or the frostbolt. Plus his natural draw, he's going to get two draws. Plus there may be other cards. I haven't kept track well enough, but he may have another loot hoarder or something as well. There may be other naturals. Yeah, I know he had a lot of cycle early on, but I think there was one hoarder to Novice Engineers. Actually, okay. he can't ping twice because that's not how numbers work. Sorry about that, but yeah. So anyway, he's big favorite to get this here. He's played to this out and let's see if he gets it. I mean, he's got a couple of chances to draw one of many burn spells still left in the deck. We'll see what he can do. Is uh, Chaki just does what? Does the only thing he can do? Puts the block, fills the board, and says, "Okay, what's going to happen?" Acolyte. Okay, that acolyte is not good, right? Because he can't. Oh, he can I ping it and draw frostbite. He oh, he can't ping first. it. Okay, he's going yeah. for Thanos. Hopefully, that doesn't cost him an out. I don't think it does. Frostnova. That's not going. to... Oh, I mean, we can see that Frostnova and that Icelance Icelance immediately saves him on board here. But we can also see a double yeah, eviscerate. Yeah, knows what I mean. Chucky, you can see the deck there. He's got hardly any card left, so. Wow, that, that came down to the wire, which is like. Oh, I had a lot of outs. There's two, still two fireballs, I think, a second torch and a frostball. Yeah, I think that's kind of crazy. So, and he had two goes at it, which, you know, effectively, the math guys out there are going to tell me off of them. It effectively doubles your chance of drawing it. It's actually slightly better than that, but yeah. There we go, Chucky taking a second victory with this rogue, and for someone. Who not normally is the biggest fan of this deck. <laughs> He's doing pretty well as Fire just misses out on the extra damage there. So are we going to see a 3-0 sweep with Rogue? Not something I think really anyone would expect in the last hero standing format. Um, so something that can happen in last hero standing, if you lose the middle game, which is the one where you have chosen the deck you want to play, sometimes it breaks down in game three for you. That's You do see, I've just thought about the three twos being a thing, but also you see several more three zeros. Like there's a three ones that get missed a lot because now Fire has used what he would have had as his counter deck to this, and now he will be less happy with the next lineup. Yeah, just really interesting, it's Rogue. You know, we, if, you, if, if you ask for a sweeper class, you, it's always like, you know, yeah, Agro sure. Shaman, Druid, even Warrior if it's ever not going to get banned. But like, the, the Rogue just put, like super performing well, and you know, Fire got a little bit unlucky there, I feel. He did have a lot of outs left in the deck. But, uh, but yeah, he's 2-0 down so far, and he really does have to go for these wins now to claw his way back to try and take Chucky down. But again, it is going to be Chucky, of course, as we discussed, on the Rogue, and Fire rocking the Paladin as his last deck. So there's a Cairn in there, so, I mean, no surprise to anybody. It's almost certainly Nazoth with probably Barnes and that sort of setup. Um, just, just trying to abuse the Death Rattles. But this deck is kind of slow, and Rogue deals with it sort of naturally with its... The, there's a reason. The way that Rogue the reason Fire that. didn't pick this deck into Rogue. Sure, right? it's pretty horrible. The only me. benefit that this deck has actually versus uh, this specific Rogue deck is que like stealth questings are much easier to deal with when you have a quality and a proc. You have a quality pyro, sure. quality consecrate. So Jackie's going to have to be really like. Uh, careful about when he times it and how much he commits into that turn. Maybe he's literally going to try quest adventure conceal and that's it. So that it's as small as possible. Sure. And you say, you know, if you have it, you have it. Great. If you don't, I'm going to hit you for like. The, the problem months. with that, and I do agree, that's definitely what Fire will be trying to do and what Chucky will trying to do to avoid it, is that Rogue was pretty good in this matchup without the questings. Yeah. So it's just an extra thing that Fire's got to try and deal with here. Um, but he could just get Barnes and draw Ragnaros or something and kill Chucky. A thing that can happen. It's definitely something um, that but this can hand is 
I mean, no hands particularly ideal. He's got the Doom so at least he'll be able to slow something down, but... I think the true server champion for Fire is actually really important in the Rogue matchup. Yep. You want an answer to the Tomb Pillager, and especially with the coin, he can just get it out as soon as possible. And it clears up everything. Tomb Pillager, Gadget Zan, Ezio Drake. There are so many good targets for True Silver Champion here. Yeah, he's going to be able to keep Chucky off the board at least. That's that's some of the battle won, uh, is keeping Rogue off the board. Unfortunately, Chucky does have that burst damage and those conceals. And at the moment, Fire does not have the, the required equalities. Yeah, he does have Doomsay though, so he can choose, you know, yet again, yeah. we discussed it the, on, in the previous time. game. Like, Doomsay timing is very important. And you kind of make the choice between a, a Doomsay into your opponent's or your rogue, opponent rogue's turn four or into turn six, potentially, you know, and really just try and deny them the turn they really want to play. But for now, it is just going to be a hero power from fire. Not going to Doomsay turn two. This is not an aggro matchup. So what do you feel about Dark Iron Skulker in general in Rogue? We've seen this card coming in more and more in the last sort of four to six weeks, I guess. I, a, I actually pick. really like it. Um, you, like I think uh, most commonly it's just a one of in the deck. Yeah. But in in all the tournaments I've seen it played and like uh, and anything I've cast as well, it's always had like a decent target. You know, even if it just kills a minion, it's kind of like a slightly bigger SI seven agent, right? Well, yeah, exactly. So, like, at it's worst, you don't have to combo like exactly. To work. It's a big enough body to be interesting to the rogue, and and sometimes just kills Forbidden Ritual. So, you know, th there's, there's those moments where it's a complete blowout, and then even at worst, it's I think it's like, okay. Right, and that matchup is one that people will argue about forever, Rogue versus Zoo, but like you say, if it kills Forbidden Ritual in that matchup, yeah, sure. fire has got the makings of like getting his pieces together here, slowly but surely. Um, not entirely sure it's going to be enough just because the matchup's so hard, but you know, sap is a issue for this Ken, and that that's a big issue in this matchup. It's just so much damage, uh, so much mana wasted with sap. Yeah, I think the benefit for Fire though is that Chaki has not got off to a quick start, so he has not played SI Seven Agents. There's no early Van Cleef, because then Paladin, like Nizof Paladin, actually takes a while to really get going. You really want to cycle, get the big minions out, draw all your answers. If you make or try and make the Zoth Paladin answer a threat early. A lot of the time, they just don't have the answer. As we've seen, Fire's just been hero powering. He could have coined into True Silver or played a Doomsay, but then that's already gone, and you've only played like an SI. So, you know, Chucky taking this game quite slow because he's had no real other option, and now Fire going for the turn five uh, sort of neg negation where it's like you are not playing your turn five. Yep. You could just hit me in the face and re dagger, and that's it. He will probably kill the 1 1 because you'll know Solemn Vigil is a possibility yeah. for the sake of one damage. If the Paladin beats you, it beats you in eights. <laughs> or it beats you in tens or fifteens with Tyrion or something. So Chucky will happily take this one damage. Well, not happily, but he'll take this one damage most likely um, in return for the fact that Solemn Vigil will cost one more mana if he does that, just as a technical thing in case the coin was any use, which. Yeah. It doesn't make much difference, but I imagine that's what we'll see him do. He's weighing up the options as to whether he can do anything else, but I think as well he's probably planning ahead. Yeah, exactly. I think he's actually letting fire think that he has many options to deal with. And he actually does have some And he actually options. went face, by the way. That's what oh, I was thinking about. So he's he probably just doesn't care, because the thing is as well... If you Solemn Vigil, what are you doing with that extra one mana will be his thinking, yeah. I guess. And also, fire's on like, a really full hand as it is. So, yeah. you know, like, yeah, he's still on Vigil Hero Powers, but then he's probably going to overdraw. So, kind of has to get the cards out of it. So, we're going to see coin. Oh, he's just got coins for Oh, nice. and this is going to okay, be okay. potentially painful. Although, Chucky doesn't have much follow up to the sap. I mean, one thing that I'm always talked it, about playing sap is I mean, make sure you do something. He can catch his Zan Prep sap. That, however, Which feels pretty reasonable. Okay, although, it walk into the um, True Silver. That's true. I mean, he could... Hmm. I mean, he could just Sinister Strike. And so I don't mind taking four a couple of times, and I'll sap something later. When I've got a more... I mean, he could just drop his Yor Drake. If he drops Drake, and then next turn, he just... Because the Cairn's going to trade, right? Which is fine. But then next turn, you can follow up with, for example, the Gadget Zan Prep Sap uh, Conceal, which then really gets out of hand, and you can really start to build on the burst, but as we said, like a lot of the burst minus Leroy is very just minion on the board for a turn and then go with this rogue deck. And if you leave the minions on the board, even stealth, as I said earlier, fire could quite easily just have the equality pyro 
uh, combo and then just blow out the whole amount of birds for Chaki. So he's got to be yeah, very careful how much he nice. really commits to it. But yeah, I, I like this because you pretty much just tell Fire to trade and you just wanted to buy a turn, right? Yeah. You, you're like, look, I'll cycle by a turn. He trades more than likely. And then, you know, you do your big blowout turn next time. Yeah, and Fire almost certainly has no choice but to trade. He's not going to beat the Rogue down anytime soon, so... And I think as well, you don't go for the true silver here because if you trade and play Sylvanas, you have Kern and Sylvanas on the board. Oh, like Kern's on one health, of course, but normally there's only the one sap knocking around. Say, yeah, so then like, well, what? Both, then if you sap Sylvanas, you keep Kern, great, you know. So I really like putting the minions on the board this turn. It looks like Fire agrees as he just drops Sylvanas and makes the trade. Yep, and that works out pretty nicely for him. But yeah, the reason rogue players, I'm calling Chucky a rogue player, he'll love me for that. The reason that Rogue players do like this deck is they have so many options in these sort of situations to deal with the problems. Is that going to be the next spreadsheet that gets sent? It just says Rogue, Rogue player <laughs> to track it. I imagine so. <laughs> so. So he does have the Gadgetzan option with the turn we said earlier. So he can prep into Sap and go for the Conceal. But now he's forced to Sap Sylvanas. Um, or not forced, but pressured into doing it. Mm -hmm. um, as he's going to cause some problems if there's some way for Fire to kill off Sylvanas and steal the Gadgetzan himself. But... Chucky also has a hell of a lot of cards, so and not a lot of real cycle he can do that feels great. Like just evisin face doesn't do much because you know the Paladin runs so much healing, for example. Yeah, well he's on a clock because of that healing. Something that he's gotta do is, you know, not run out of damage. One way that Rogue loses games of Hearthstone to controlling decks is just run out of damage. Uh, it, it's fairly limited in the amount he can do. Obviously, with double questing in the deck, it can do a lot of damage. Um, Never play them both on the same turn. No. <laughs> but yeah, this was actually a way better play because I completely forgot that he had Shadow Strike in hand. So he could actually just remove the Sylvanas anyway. I was like, oh yeah, you know, pre, you know, if this trade's going to be weird. It's like, no, you just Shadow Strike. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine. So he did get rid of the first part of Cairn. Gets rid of Sylvanas. Those are banked in, in the, the Bank of Nazoth now, though. So if Nazoth does come out, he can refill the board. The Bank and of Nazoth. Bank of Nazoth. That's what you got to do. It just banks Death Rattles. And then wow. you draw them out later. Okay. I like that bank. So we'll fire if he actually draws it, because although he's not under a lot of pressure at the moment in terms of health, the gadgets and stealth is just natural pressure, right? Like, you, you know there's going to be problem turns coming up. He doesn't have too much he can do. We see now just a five-mana solemn vigil. That's like, it's pretty much going to feel terrible for fire here. And draws nothing whatsoever that he can play. Yep, um, that must be frustrating for him as well. But like you say, the, the Nazoth, the healing, Chucky will almost certainly just go for it now. He might as well. You've got the, un the, the auctioneer with eight mana. This is the time to see. And he's, he's just planning a little bit. I think we'll see him go fairly soon, as soon as he planned what he wants to do. But uh, we'll see him go and see how much damage he can do. And he's probably deciding whether he's actually going to try and do max damage now, whether he needs to hold stuff back because of that healing. Yeah, he could even go halfway and just play like the Skulker into a vis onto the can, it clears up the 1-1, one, one, and then just go face, and then you've got like two four power minions on the board. There isn't too much of an overcommittal. You have the other gadget Zan in hand as well to carry on cycling if it gets cleared. Gonna start off with the uh, the one durability deadly poison though, just to cycle, and Van Cleef kind of changes everything now. Now Chucky needs to stop and consider, do I make a gigantic Van Cleef and make him have equality clear? Yeah, and then if I do, what are the odds of him having the equality clear? And you know what, at this point with this much cycle and this far in the game, pretty high. Yeah, he's just going to go with the line that gets him um, some damage with minions. And then that way, that recursive damage will mean that Fi will have to at some point deal with this board. If he deals with this board, that makes way for like the questing, for the Edwin, those cards. Yeah. And if he doesn't deal with this board, then maybe we can eat up a healing spell. Yeah, that was a really, like that last play was really strange. So. Chucky, like valued the cycle and using the Eviscerate on the second half of Cairn, over just, uh, which is one extra damage, the Evis doing four, Cairn being on three, uh, over him just using the durability of his weapon. He takes four damage, but it's very clean, and you hold an Evis, and I feel like versus distance off Paladin, you kind of want the, like, the burst out of nowhere, you know, like the double Evis turn. So that's an you know, interesting choice from Chucky there, but I guess he did cycle additional card as well. Yeah, it's, it's awkward for him here. He's struggling to get any real damage. So he's managed to do eight damage in the game so far. Uh, ten, sorry. But that's not a whole lot from a rogue that's supposed to get going reasonably early. And the fire's just got multiple options. And the Bank of Nazoth is also ready to open. Yeah, there he is. 
couple of turns. He's going to refill the board. We know so far uh, Sylvanus and Ken. Yeah, and no taunts and possibly no taunts in the deck. I wouldn't be surprised if there's no taunt in this deck. I was going to say, it's very common just to run the big three, right? So, you know, Sylvanus, Ken and, and uh, Tyrion. Uh, some players actually put in you know, the Infested Tauren, a couple of other cards like that. At one point, I think there was uh, even Loot Hoarders in the deck, but that was probably a bit too heavy. But yeah, I think it'll just be the big three from Fire, but... Chucky making that board again, though, and again, trying to force that healing out without actually using the burst of any sort, without using any of his big cards. Um, trying to force either the healing or the mass removal, one or the other. Yeah, it's kind of funny that, like, Chucky's, like, always just coming into the board, but nothing too crazy, yet all game, Fire's not had inequality. <laughs> Right. So that's the funny, you'd imagine your opponent just has by now, and they uh, actually have it, and now maybe even that's a read from, from like, Chaki can make there, In because there was, Fire, like, played the Consecrate with the Wild Pyro down instead of just doing an Equality Clear. So maybe it's like, okay, well, there's two of your activators, you've only got two left, what are the odds on you having one of those and an Equality at this point? No. This is interesting. These players are not allowed to use deck trackers or anything, and they are allowed to take notes, but I don't know if Fire's been taking them. So Fire needs to know which minions are left in his deck here if he wants to play that Barnes. Like, he doesn't want to Doomsay his whole hand away. Yeah, but you do want a Tyrion twice. Exactly. So, so he needs to he's know... He's all in on Barnes with Fire. There are 12 cards left in his deck, so if he's been keeping track, and you see him counting on his fingers here, he's working out exactly which minions are left. Um, this is why you know, they are allowed to write physical notes, as you see Chucky doing now. Um, when Chucky was very specific about earlier, he was like, I have my notepad, can I use it? And they're like, yes, go for it. Yeah, different tournaments have different rules. Some yeah. let you do different things. This one, you're allowed to use physical pen and paper to take notes. And Fire is now working out which minions he has left. Yeah. So we're going to just start cycling Chucky. He's going to try and build up a gigantic Van Cleef. I guess this is the turn now, right? You pretty much set up lethal if the Van Cleef is big enough. Now he has questing as well, but pretty sure it's just going to be the Cleef to start putting on the damage. Yeah, and he's expecting this to get wiped out. Chucky's not playing this expecting to win. It's what you said earlier. Yeah. It's a combination of taking a chance while it's there and you've got to drain the Paladin's resources somehow. So this is the first. Yeah, and, and there's a backup plan. Level. He has questing plus multiple yeah. spells he can play next turn. So he has a way to like go. It's like waves. You've got to be Paladin waves. Get them to use their clear again and again, and when they're out, you win. And there's the equality. The fire now has lots of options. So now, how is he going to do this? Because he should equality first, if that's the plan. Because he'll want... He could, well, I suppose it depends his, his overall game plan. But he might want to heal on this low health. Yeah, and if he wants to play Forbidden, so this is actually a, a misstep. You can equality first, play Forbidden Healing, and then heal yourself because your Pyro's on two health instead of one. After the uh, after the AoE from the Pyro. So Fire, a bit of a misplay there, could have had a 3-1 on the board. Uh, and still been at the same health and everything, you don't actually lose anything for doing that play. Right. So he could have actually presented Chucky with a minion that he has to deal with, and that's actually a mistake I've made. But, I've made that but, mistake. But I made it a long time ago, and I was like, I think once you make it once and realize, you're like, oh yeah, that's kind of silly. And so, something uh, that people don't realize in preparing for a tournament like this, and, and probably the difference between like the pros like Chucky, obviously, and the really strong amateurs, like the likes of Fire, is you don't have to just learn one or two decks. You don't just learn the four decks you play. You're probably learning six decks in the space of, I mean, this particular meta, maybe a week. Like you yeah, know the basics and I think it, like the expansion on that is the fact that you learn the deck and all its matchups, which then yeah. just extends it and out. If you're doing so a last hero standing thing, you suddenly get the idea at the last minute, hey, Paladin fits my lineup and it's worked for fire, so obviously it does. Maybe you just haven't got the reps with the deck to have made that mistake the one time you need to make it to go, oh, yeah, yeah I get that. Are we, uh, are you feeling the Ragnaros here, Linda? That's all I'm asking, because I am. Here it comes. <laughs> it's got to happen. You, can't, you just can't let Questing live a turn. Honestly, so many games, if Questing lives, the opponent just dies. It's like, it's actually that silly. I mean, this is only a Questing Adventurer, like, on its own. A lot of the time, it's comboed with another minion, so, you know, you have, like, the double threat. But it's already at 9, and, yeah, Fire's on 25, so a reasonable amount, but... You know the Rogue's already got four cards in hand, so that's already even more damage, and it's going to just stack up out of control for a minute. Yep, I agree. And just going back to what we said right at the start about Fire, he's doing really well here. He's 2-0 down. He's known for being a little bit um, sort of impulsive when he's yeah. losing, a little bit tilty. He's got the advice to slow down, and he's stuck to that 
all the way through this match. Whatever happens, I think he's done a good job of... Really like the doom here. Well. This is well. really nice play. So this has a dual job of, if this happens and he hits face, then the quest, the, the Doomsayer needs an answer, the, uh, as mm -hmm. well as the Ragnaros, because you don't want to leave the Ragnaros up as well. a lot. I don't think it's enough, but I want to count it. Is it 20? Low 20. So we all just went quiet because <laughs> you have to count. We've only like, got 20 fingers behind us, the, guys. That's there's yeah, the we've... damage from like Leroy weapon, and then every single time a card is played, you add plus one as well. Right. So I couldn't take you know, it takes a minute to count. To start counting. So Leroy's going to come down now. What's, what's the? Is he just going to double sap here? Do you think? Uh I kind of like it. Because you'd imagine with the quest adventure and Leroy on the board with no opposition. You either won or you've not at this point. He can't leave the Doomsayer up, and I don't think it's worth trying to kill the Doomsayer. I'd rather just take the damage, play double sap, and be like, don't have Tyrion. Yeah. In which he could still That's kill. If Tyrion came point. down, then Leroy would still have to be cleared up because he could just face tank the shield, yeah. hit, uh, kill the Tyrion, and then go face with questing. Shadow striking a whelp that you gave your opponent feels so bad, but it's probably correct in this Oh, position. he's doing it. Okay. Giving himself that chance. Yeah, he, he's about, just he, giving himself the safety I win net. next turn if you don't have things. <gasps> and fire has humility. things. Oh my god. Actual humility on a quest. 13 attack questing adventurer. The only problem is, well, he would have so to his humility. His point here is he has one in three lethal guaranteed. If he wanted a one in three shot, he could take it right now. Would you take it? No. Because you've got. <laughs> of course, that's I a very wouldn't. secure answer there. You, you'd thought of this before I even asked you, didn't you? <laughs> I, I, yeah, you wouldn't. But he's, you can he, just he, guarantee. As he the started, was like, like, I can do this. So now I need things that are better. Now I think I'm winning, so I don't need to do anything silly like that. Yeah, Fire taking a very like nice logical approach here, clearing off, Love the it. questing, and then just the humility on the Leroy. It's now a one-two. Chances of it getting buffed are quite slim unless we see a cold blood, which isn't going to help too much. Um, and while still holding at 11 health, which when you've just seen your opponent pretty much spend their whole hand and you've seen eviscerates already, you're like, probably not got a random like six damage out of nowhere. Yeah, uh, it's looking pretty bleak for Chucky. And I think this is what happens when you don't have a gold deck to go with your gold cards. Really? Do you think it's that? Gold card back needs gold cards to go with it. That's all I can come up with. So when, no, fire, when you got the gold, gold card fire. back on right, dust in gold of every single card yes. in the game. Okay. So Fire played that really carefully, really well, kept his nerve, and I'm pretty impressed with the guy. Like I say, we, we here know him reasonably well from previous events. It's good to see him putting in a good fight there. It looked like for a while that Chucky might just sweep through the lineup there. Yeah, I think um, he stayed relatively calm throughout the series uh, so far, considering, as you said, it was 0-2 and a very brutal 0-2 zero, zero yeah. as well. But um, I just think it kind of shows a little bit that he might not have played the decks to the, to, or done the most preparation possible mm -hmm. in the fact that the, the pyro equality thing is like, like I said, everyone does it once, but he should have done it once by now. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that should have happened already. So kind of a strange one, but maybe it's better because he didn't even really notice it looked like. He didn't like pick up on it or look Another thing when you So maybe it's better that if he just didn't realize he, yeah. he kind of misplayed say, and then just moved on with it. Like um, less Hearthstone, you, you drop out your playtest groups and stuff. So maybe he's made that mistake and didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't have anyone to pull you up on it, maybe. Yeah, exactly. You didn't get too punished in the end. If you don't get pulled up on it, it's not one of those mistakes where, you know, if your minions rotate and you stick a taunt on the wrong side of the board, like the, the thing that happened to JJ, you know it's happened. But if, you, yeah. if you're making a mistake repetitively and you're thinking about other things at the time, you might not even pull yourself up on it sometimes. Yeah, but well, we are going to go into the next game. So it is going to be Chucky versus Fire. Chucky's currently 2-1 up, and Fire is again on his Nazoth Paladin. As we said, this is last hero standing. Fire has to win two more games with this Nazoth deck, and Chucky has his choice of Hunter and Warrior. And he has gone with Hunter, which in the past, or even now, has a pretty good reputation for beating slower, more like control -y decks with just relentless sources of damage, and then the double call the wild in the back end. So I know you are like a Hunter fan, a big time. You could say it's that. A, it's a class I've avoided, apart from when you couldn't avoid it back with Undertaker and stuff, yeah, yeah, you had yeah. to play it. But you're saying that this has a reputation for that matchup. How strong a chance do you think Chucky has here? Do you think this is definitely a really, really good matchup? Uh, so 
it, it's kind of weird now with them, everyone playing the two wings. It really depends how the Hunter deck's built because there are a few different variations. Like, by the, this looks like even pre-expansion. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, all the cards we've seen look pre-expansion and nothing too crazy going on at the moment. But there's Barnes. Good old Barnes. Um, so I think that... The, the Hunter deck has a really strong chance just because it's just relentless, steady damage. Yes. Like, you try and hero power a lot of the time. The minions are always awkward to deal with. Like, equality conk against, like, a wolf does, does, doesn't do much right. because you have the 1-1. One, one, so many death rattles with high main, etc. It's just a super powerful deck overall. But this deck is more than likely not built to, like, purposely target aggro. So, you know, yep. it's, uh, it does run juggler, and we did see Unleash. So it's a tough one. I think... The overall late game power of Hunter with just high mains and Call of the Wilds is enough to beat almost. Right, because the one the Rogue had a minute ago is that it couldn't force through enough damage. You go, you go heal, Rogue runs out of cards. But like yeah. you say, Hunter has a magic button that says you are never safe. You just yeah. bang, bang, bang. And bang. also just a board that is frustrating to try and clear. You just can't clear it. It's really annoying. But like I say, in terms of build, a lot of lists at the moment are running cards like Rag in there as well because Barnes. If you know, yeah. if you Barnes Rag, you almost just win. Um, early on, but it's still a good et finisher for Hunter. Yeah, and there are very, very, very few cards that Barnes doesn't interact with in some level. Like yeah. either you get a 1 1 with a Death Rattle or you get a 1 1 Knife Juggler. Uh, there are very few cards in the deck, if any. I think there's one or two usually, but that it doesn't at least give you something. Yeah, there's like, like King's Alec, for, for example. Like sure. King's Alec's a pain because it does nothing. Houndmaster is a pain, it's just a 1 1, not even a beast. Uh, to the extent where I'm not really a huge fan of Double Hound Master at the moment, because I feel like if you run the um, the secret kit with the Cloaked yep. Huntress and the secrets, then there's even less targets for Hound Master. So right. it's like, come on, you know, like, so a lot of times I've drawn Double Hound Master. There is the Ivory Knight, excuse me, when I just die on screen. <laughs> um, Ivory Knight, which is one of the cards from the first wing that. Favourite card in the set. Really made Paladin viable again. Like, Paladin was viable when Whispers first came out because the aggro decks weren't tuned. And then they got tuned and the Zoth Paladin became a little bit too inconsistent, started losing. Then Ivory Knight came out and says, hey, my healing's consistent again. We can, we can be played again. Oh, okay. That's what we're talking about. Fire grips the back of his chair as Barnes has done his job. He walked out on stage with a pretty much a lion behind him. It's going to cause a hell of a amount of trouble. It looks little, little now as a 1-1, one, one, but the fact that it's just generated generated the token and then when it dies there's two two twos popping out of that bad boy so this is actually like almost worst case scenario for fire yeah really bad news there for fire just two two twos for nothing basically yeah and, uh, the, and the double juggle as well the has some still control up. over when that happens uh, but you want it to happen fairly soon otherwise it gets buffed into a three three that starts hitting you in the face so just an absolute nightmare for fire there and, and, and this is exactly obviously the high name from barnes helps but this is exactly what i'm talking about how does a Paladin clear this board? It would be like, Consecrate Pyro Equality <laughs> to actually fully clear the board. It's horrible. And look at it, already on 14 health. What does he do? He's going to go for the Ivory Knight and try and get something big, I imagine, because yeah, he needs that instant heal now. Heal. Lay on hands. Yep. Seems good. He heal for eight now, heal for eight later. Yep, definitely just going to keep himself alive there. And also, yeah, like you say, more coming later. He's got the Forbidden Healing. He's got some time here, but one thing that you... Hunter does it like you. I just can't word it differently. You just keep hitting them. Yeah, well, so imagine this now. Like, if any of the minions died, they create bigger minions. Sure. That's like a weird situation. Yeah. It's like both two kindly grandmothers to a certain extent. But also, there's the wolf that could come down this turn. Like, just wolf hero power and be like, there's more damage. And then just continue to stack it up. Because at the end of the day, if the Nazoth Paladin gets pushed to heavily heal, it, it will really just not have any good turns at all because we can see Forbidden Healing uses all of your mana. So if you want to heal for a lot, then you're using your whole turn. And then what's the point in healing if your opponent's just going to smash you in the face again? And and the, the whole paradox here is he wants to clear this board because when he... Doomsayer would be good if the board wasn't full. Sure. When he um, is saving his stuff to deal with Call of the Wild, he doesn't want to all trigger all these things. Like, you, you haven't yeah, exactly. Like he's how kill him before the call of the wild happens. But then they, it's just a mess for the paladin to it, deal with. It's right now. very similar to the uh, to the reason why hunters good versus say Reno warlock because a lot of the time you can stack up the minions and then they like pressure them into arena and then you just do the damage again and you're like okay now you don't have a big deal. Paladin has more options of course. But uh, still, not a great matchup. And these minions, co these these spells that help fire, cost so much. You can only do one of them per turn for the large part. 
and you know, he's not even just getting value advantage let alone he's getting beaten up and I mean healing yourself doesn't get you any value at all it just buys you time and if your opponent's pressuring you with all this tempo with all this board with all this initiative uh, it's just going to keep coming back he's going to buy a bit of time here yeah I'm just looking at the damage available for Chaki so with the kill command the quick shot and the horse rider he has like lethal over two turns because he can't play everything yep. and hero power but like for example he could just kill off um the 4-1 and the doomsayer play the wolf to just again make another target that's awkward to deal with hero power and then i would just go face because your opponent isn't on eight next turn which means there's no lay on hands available no rag light lord available for any healing so you pressure them that hard and then you have Kill command, quick shot, hero power to like finish it out. And I'm probably wrong here. There can't be many eight mana spells for Paladin. Like, yeah, Chucky, exactly. Chucky, Chucky knows he healed for there, eight, and you're like, like, I wonder, is that ac actually just lay on hands? <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like it's not a not a mysterious thing at this point in time. Yeah, I, I really like this play. Just get the sticky minions down, hero power, and then just burst next turn. You can actually fit in the. Well, I suppose the action horse rider doesn't make much difference because it's the same damage as the hero power. But even if he needs to, the horse ride is a very flexible card anyway. But just having kill command quick shot in hand is fantastic. Yeah, double forbidden healing there from Fire. No surprise he's been talking about that a little bit recently. In that yeah, some people only play one because they've got the Ivory Knight now. Yeah, I'm just sorry. I got distracted because I'm wondering if Fire's going to do it again. Okay, I thought he's going to go for the equality and then do it again. <laughs> I was like, no, oh, learn. But he is just going to go for the Solemn Vigil, draw a lot of cards, and then heal for two. This is kind of risky. He clears off a good chunk of the board. Oh, that's is he not nice. even healing that's himself? Nice. That's nice. Okay. So how much damage is available? There's five, six, seven, eight, uh, 13. Does Hofer change anything? I don't think so. I like the way that you play Hunter, and you see Animal Companion as a 4 2 meter <laughs> charge. <laughs> yeah! It's like, let's see, I told you, does Huffer change it? <laughs> oh, there we go, the shrug from fire, as that is a hell of a lot of damage. I understand what I've been doing wrong all this time and now. That's going to be the game. Well, I told you, Animal Companion, Huffer, same card. Yep, and Not a problem. Chucky, just yet again, showing what a great player he is in these tournaments. You know, getting here in the first place through, you know, he was one of the invites. The invites of players were mainly coming through tough groups in the first place. Yeah, it's like a 32-man qualifier. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like they just rocked up today exactly. and they playing some Hearthstone. They beat out li That's literally... a tough match anyway. Yeah, the, the qualifiers were literally like some of the best players yeah. in the world. And uh, what did you think of the old Huffer there, Subtle? Did you enjoy it? Companion's been drawn. Does Huffer change anything? Like, yeah, obviously that is 100% Huffer every single time. But yeah, it was, it was a fun series. I think uh, we talked about it at the start. Maybe Fire's nerves, maybe his, his lack of dedication to the game compared to some of the people here um, came back to bite him in a couple of occasions. There was, um, you know, the Pyromancer equality thing that you guys spoke about extensively. Uh, towards the end there, there was some... Um, some different tricks he could have done with Solemn Vigil if he'd have started off trading into the um, the Infested Wolf, for example. He could have done the extra pyro things and cleared her in a different way. So um, definitely some, some sequencing issues with some stuff there. But I think generally, moral of the story, the stronger player came out on top in that. But I think... Um, my takeaway from that is like Chucky suddenly likes playing Rogue. Yeah, like, true. when did this happen? Well, he's making it work though. And what we were right. talking about during the uh, during the series is, uh, and what you pointed out, Lorindo, is when 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 you lose the game, the counter pick, that's when you're in serious trouble in last year. I was standing because it's like, okay, I played Paladin, got the win, which is fine, but then your opponent just picks whatever they want to try and beat it, and they've probably right. got a deck that can beat control. Like you, you imagine you don't really go into last era standing tournament with it, without any deck that sure. can be a control deck. Right, and right. The Hunter we saw, it was it was very straightforward. The, you know, there was nothing really too much to think about. It was just the plays that made sense every single turn. And Chucky just worn him down, so not too much of a surprise overall. Oh, and yeah, Chucky is going to progress forward. So let's see how that makes our Group C lineup, I believe we're looking at. Yeah. So let's take a look at the standings in the group overall and see what that means. Of course, it means Chucky has made his way through to our top eight tomorrow, and it means the redemption match for RDU is on. There's a redemption tournament going on right now for the players who didn't make it through Swiss, but this is very much redemption for RDU.